Hey, you're watching The Voice of Revival. I want to shout out to all of our special partners and friends, and those out there just like you that make this worldwide ministry so very possible. Today's episode, I've got a powerfully anointed message for you. It's part one of a message that I recently preached under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and I believe that as you watch it, the power of God is going to come alive on the inside of you. get these things in the mail from Nordstrom's, right? They come in the box. You don't have to go to the store and shop this. And you can like pick your outfits or they'll send them and then you keep what you want and you send them back. And so my wife, man, she gets some great outfits out of this stuff. They'll send me these things. I'm like, did they shop in the woman's section or what? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'll open this stuff up and it looks like it's got lipstick on it. And the pictures of the guy, they'll send you pictures of the guys wearing this stuff. And I'm like, man, I don't want to look like that wearing that. So I put it back in the box and send it off. Why? Because I'm looking at an image and you start to see yourself that way. And I'm like, I don't want nothing to do with that harvest. That's what society is trying to do with the demasculation and the emasculation of manhood in this nation. It started generations ago. Now it's permeated into style and into every... Because they're trying to demasculate men. Because there's an image. <clears throat> and that image is, is trying to cause people to see what they want to reproduce. And so we sowed the seed in the ground... And now, you know, I'm watering it and I'm expecting corn and watermelon to come up in the backyard because you expect your seed. No, there is not a farmer that ever sows a seed and does not expect a harvest. You can't show me one farmer. There is not one farmer that... Now, you might find him at the end of the, of the season... And he might not expect possibly the crops to come out the way they were because of a drought. But at the time of sowing, when any farmer sows his seed, there is no farmer that is ever going to expect it not to grow. Why? Because if you really truly don't expect it to grow, nobody in their right mind is going to waste seed. Seed has the ability to, re to prophesy your future. Seed has the ability to prophesy your harvest. That's what it does. Seed will prophesy your harvest. The picture on the outside of the packet prophesies what it's going to be as long as you plant it in the proper soil, as long as you take care of it and you provide it the right sunshine and the right time and you plant it in the right time of year. It has the right uh, heat outside or, or, or the right type of rain. All of those conditions are right. You have to plant the right seed and you have to water it with the word and you have to water it with praying in the spirit and you have to water it with fasting sometimes, you know, fasting and you have to actually water it with the things of God and you have to most of all water it with faith. I don't know how I got that far out of my notes. <laughs> but this nation has been reaping a harvest of seed that's been sowed for generations. That's why we are where we are today. That's why we're where we are. But that can be changed. Because God is looking for a generation that's willing to plant the right kind of seed. The right kind of seed. Because even, even in this generation, there is still a harvest that God desires to come. So the bones came together and then the skin and the muscle was put over the bones and Ezekiel stood there and he said, but there was no breath in them. You can have structure. You can have muscle. You can have everything on the outside that looks perfect. Marriages can look perfect. Family, you can look healthy and on the inside be eaten up with cancer. No one knows. 
And so they were covered now with skin and muscle, but there was no spirit in them. There was no life. Because it's the spirit that makes the difference. The spirit makes the difference. There are folks say, well, I just don't like their spirit. Because it don't matter how they're dressed up or how they look if they got a nasty spirit. I mean, you can look like you rolled out from under a bridge, but if you've got a good spirit, people with the right spirit, people want to be around those people. It's the spirit that always makes the difference. It's the Ruach of God that makes the difference. It was the Spirit of God in the, in the people, in the valley of dry bones that made the difference. They were still dead until God put His Ruach breath in them. Then He said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied, and as he commanded me, and as the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. God is looking for a generation that would look at a people that might look dead on the outside that might look like they're all dressed up on the outside that might look like they got the wrong spirit on the inside but God is looking for a generation that would be willing to prophesy to the four winds and call the winds of God into a nation call the winds of God into their church call the winds of God into their family call the wind of God into their situation it doesn't matter how dead it looks it doesn't matter how empty it seems the difference is the spirit he's looking for people that would be willing to prophesy to the wind that requires you to not care about the way it looks it might look hopeless but you prophesy anyway it might look like it's about to fail but you prophesy anyway. It might look like there's no hope left, but you prophesy anyway. You prophesy the word of the Lord. Don't prophesy what CNN tells you. Don't prophesy what Fox tells you. Don't prophesy what some blogger living in his mama's basement tells you. Prophesy what the word of God has to say about it. If God said it, he'll do it. And if he spoke it, you can bet yourself he'll bring it to pass. then don't you dare stand and look and say, well, I ain't seen it happen yet. Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me. He said, have faith in God. For if you have faith the size of of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea. Now, not necessarily here at the dynamic life place, but other places that I preach. When I get on that verse, they be like, oh, you want them word of faith preachers. Yep. What are you, a word of doubt believer? I am word of faith because I surely ain't word of doubt. Or get away from those unbelieving believers. They, well, I don't, they say, well, those are, I don't believe in that name it and claim it. Why not? Because if God said I could have it, I'm going to name it and claim it till I get it. You want to stay broke? Stay broke. You want to stay sick? Stay sick. You want to stay busted? Stay busted. You want to stay disgusted? You can stay disgusted. But I'm going to have what God says I can have. You can say to this mountain, Be thou removed, be cast into the sea. And then the Bible says, and not doubt in your where? Heart. Not your head, your heart. Because the devil going to tell you all kinds of things in your mind. Somebody's lying to you if they said you'd never have a thought of doubt. That's why Paul said you have to what? Cast down imaginations and bring 
captive thoughts. Jesus said, if you not doubt in your heart, you would what? Have whatsoever things you say. You would have the things you say because what you say comes from what you believe. The problem you have, most of y'all do exactly have actually what you say. Because you say what you believe. I can't do it. I'm not smart enough. I'll always be like this. My family was always this way. And so you believe that and then you say that. That's why salvation requires you to with a heart a man believes and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It requires you to believe and to speak. The Bible says, I believe and therefore I speak. You can't speak until you believe. Because if you speak before you believe, you're just speaking. But when you believe, and then you speak. Those words become prophetic because the words that you then speak are not your words. That's why Jesus said, if any two or three would touch and agree, yes, he's talking about believers, but he's actually talking if you would be able to touch and agree with his word, you would have what you say. Because when you come into agreement with his will, and with his word and you speak his will and his word you're speaking what the Lord the word of the Lord and when you speak that word it will come to pass the Bible says Jesus said you shall have whatsoever you say not some things you say if you believe it and you speak it you shall I, I, well, I just don't believe that. Well, then you will never get it. The reason you don't get it and you don't believe it, it that's the whole part. Because if you don't believe, you won't receive. The woman with the issue of blood said, if I could but just touch the hem of his garment, because she first heard about Jesus. And then once she had heard about Jesus, then she what she said within herself if I can get and touch the hem of his garment, I what? Shall be made whole. She had made the determination before she had ever left the house that day. Once she had heard about Jesus, it got on the inside of her spirit, and she said, all I need to do is touch him, and I shall have it. She said what she believed. And then after she said what she believed, she put faith to work and went out to touch his garment. Prophecy always requires faith. He said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded and the breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. Hallelujah. Stand with me tonight. Because it's the spirit that makes the difference. There's a lot of different. There's many out there today that may look like you got it all put together, but on the inside, there's no real life. It's empty because you're missing the spirit of God. Because when the Ruach breath of God came in, it, didn't, it did not matter. The Bible doesn't even tell us. It doesn't even tell us how long those bones had been there. Now, science, since y'all like to believe that, science will actually tell you that if it got to the point of being bones, they'd been there for quite a while. I mean, that's the natural law of science. It takes a minute for all the flesh to come off and for bones to get bleached. I would say perhaps those bones 
in some cases could have been there for decades decades maybe even centuries and it doesn't matter how long it's been dead it doesn't matter how empty it's been as soon as the word of God shows up as soon as the Ruach of God comes it doesn't matter how bleached those bones may have been it doesn't matter how disjointed they and it doesn't even matter how far they've been scattered because the Bible says they were scattered all throughout the valley they weren't just lying neatly beside each other they had been they had been, I'm sure, drugged by animals to all different sections, and they were all over the place. They had been completely disjointed. There were probably sc uh, skulls and leg bones, ribs, all different directions. That Ezekiel looking at it with his natural mind and his natural eye would look at those bones and in the natural eye it would be completely impossible to find all of the hundreds of bones in the human body and put them all in the right order. And it don't matter how mixed up you may be. doesn't matter how empty you may be, how spread apart your destiny may seem. It doesn't matter how bleached your life may seem out. It doesn't matter that everything seems to be disjointed and separated and empty. It could have been for weeks, months, years, decades. It doesn't matter how long. doesn't matter in our city or even in our nation how messed up it might look like because it's messed up the only thing that needs to happen is the is the wind of God because when his ruach begins to blow into a home when his ruach begins to blow into a life He'll put families back together again. When his wind begins to blow into a, into a situation, he'll drive sickness from a body. When his wind begins to blow into a nation, he'll begin to, to drive out unrighteousness with righteousness. Because it's the spirit that makes the difference. They were dead before Ezekiel got there and they were still dead once the bones and the flesh came on them. It took the Spirit of God to put life back into that valley of dry bones. When God formed Adam in the clay of the garden. It wasn't until that God breathed into the nostrils of Adam and man became a living soul Adam was still dead until God breathed in him the bones were still dead until he breathed in them the church hadn't even been birthed until in Acts chapter 2 the wind of God breathed into the church and it took the breath of God to bring life and make man a living soul in the garden. It took the breath of God to, to make the church a living soul. What makes you think you can do anything without his spirit? You need his breath. We need his breath tonight, amen? We need his breath. It might look like a valley of dry bones on the television. It might look like a valley of dry bones in the newspaper. The thing about it is, is it is a valley of dry bones. 
It doesn't even have to just look. It is one. You don't have to be afraid of the fact when you have truth. Because truth always trumps fact. And his word is truth. And the truth is that when his spirit breathes on it, it will live again. It will live again. Your hope will live again. Your dream will live again. Your family will live again. Your situation will live again. When his spirit breathes on it, it will live again. All you need is the breath of God to breathe in it. And I hear his spirit. I feel his spirit blowing even in this place tonight. His spirit is sweeping in here. And I, he wants to know. He wants to know the answer to the question that he posed to Ezekiel is, Can these bones live? The only thing you have to do is answer that question. And then once you answer that question and you realize, Lord, only you know. Or in other words, Ezekiel is saying, yeah, these can live, but you're going to have to do this. And then the Lord said to Ezekiel, prophesy then to the bones. You have to be willing to ask that question. Answer the question, can the bones live? And then... When you hear the Spirit of God say to you, yeah, they'll live. You just need to prophesy to them. You just need to prophesy to them. Tonight I feel the spirit of prophecy right now in this place. Lift up your hands tonight. I want you to know that your bones, your situation, the deadness in every area of your life it can live. You have to be willing to answer that question and you have to be willing to prophesy it out of your mouth because the minute you begin to open your mouth and call on the Spirit of God, there is a Ruach wind of God that is going to sweep into your life and sweep into your situation and sweep into your home and sweep into your family and even sweep into this nation. There is a Ruach wind of God that is coming. Can these bones live? Are you ready? If you're in this place tonight, and you're in this place tonight, there is a wind of God blowing. If you need life in those bones, whatever area of it is that you've been looking at dead bones, maybe it's been a life, maybe it's a situation, I don't know what it is, but you need to lift up your bones and you need to, an you need to lift up your hands and you need to answer that question by coming to this altar and when you come to this altar, you'll be prophesying the very answer that these bones can live because when you do that, God is going to breathe on you. He's going to breathe on your situation. These bones can live your life can live you can right now God is going to break the power of anxiety and depression and suicide off the lives of people in this place tonight right now that spirit of death is going to be loosed off of you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus and even if you're in this place tonight and you have no relationship with God. You're away from God. You might feel like empty, dead, dried up bones. Lost in sin. Away from Him. But tonight. Tonight His wind can blow. And bring life to every area of your soul. You don't have to go out of here the way you came. You can give everything to Jesus. You don't have to live compromised any longer. You don't have to worry about the opinions of men any longer. All you need to do is completely surrender everything to God and say yes to Jesus and come to this altar. If there are those here tonight like that, you need to make your way to this altar as the wind of God, as the Spirit of the Lord blows across this place tonight.
The wind of God is blowing on the dry bones of medical reports tonight. He's blowing on the dry bones of depression tonight. He's blowing on the dry bones of anxiety and suicide tonight. He's blowing on the dry bones of hurt. He's blowing on the dry bones of of. of of separation he's blowing on the dry bones of wanting to give up he's blowing on the dry bones of emptiness tonight his wind his ruach breath will make all the difference in your life you can receive life and every area of your situation and every area of your being tonight he'll fill you with his spirit He's, I feel the wind. I hear it. And I can feel it. The winds that have been blowing in the natural today are just a prophetic indicator of the wind of the Spirit that is going to be blowing. And just as trees have been uprooted and blown over, they are simply prophetic illustrations of the uprooting of God, that He's going to uproot things out of your spirit that have stood there for so long, that have held you back. God is going to uproot the the root of iniquity and the root of wickedness and the root of unrighteousness and even the root of unbelief and even the root of infirmity that has carried itself through your familial line over and over and over again hurt somebody that's been hurt you've been abused as a child and you've carried that regret you've carried that throughout your life and it's been the source and the root of the reason that you've walked in rejection and you haven't been able to ex- to find and accept proper love from individuals but tonight God is going to set you free tonight the wind of his spirit is going to blow on your life tonight there's going to be healing tonight there's going to be deliverance tonight there's going to be restoration in every area of your life Come on, lift up your hands. I feel the anointing. I feel the wind of God. He's doing it tonight. He's. Do- I believe that as you watch this message, the tangible anointing of God has even pervaded right there where you are. And I believe that by faith, many of you are receiving your miracle even right now. If this program has blessed you, I want to hear from you. Make sure you reach out to us at www.revivalfirewm.com and stay tuned for next week's broadcast part two of this very message. Thank you for watching Voice of Revival with Chad McDonald. The Voice of Revival broadcast is the media ministry outreach of Revival Fire World Ministries and is made possible by the prayers and faithful support of partners like you. All gifts and contributions are tax deductible where allowed by law. For more information or to give, visit us on the web at www.thevoiceofrevival.com.